Heutzutage geht der Trend Today's trend is increasingly towards integrating as much automation technology as possible on as little space as possible and as close as possible to the machine. The challenge is to connect as many actuators and sensors as possible in a small control cabinet measuring as little as 40 by 20 by 12 centimeters and to possibly also integrate an intelligent master module for the controller. Plus, you might try to throw in a display somewhere as well. Because after all, why spend money on a PC if everything can be integrated in one place? True, and a very good solution here would be the ET200SP peripheral system by Siemens. It is highly selective and offers a great channel density. Add to that some intelligent central assemblies, either as hardware PLC or with the latest developments also PC-based, which will allow a running of the visualization on that central assembly as well. Of course, this is where the next challenge awaits. How will we get all this into this tiny control cabinet? Let's have a look at this in the TIA selection tool, our Siemens configurator. We can test out everything there and can go ahead and order right away. I have prepared the peripheral modules in the TIA selection tool earlier. We now have a look at selecting the right master. We can choose between a hardware PLC in a compact design, or also very compact, the open controller, our PC-based system available in a Windows 32-bit or Windows 64-bit version. The open controller is a PC-based controller platform for the ET200SP peripheral system and offers an option for Windows-side visualizations or other applications, like the running of a database, in addition to the controller functionality. We choose the Windows 7 64-bit version with 512 power tags, HMI to go with that, drag them onto the module, and they are ready to go. Now we need evidence that everything will fit. We'll switch to the limits, view and have a look. I did say before that my control cabinet is just 40 centimeters wide and 20 centimeters high. Yep, no problem, everything fits. Let's have a closer look. The height here is 141 millimeters, still having plenty of space for wiring and for heat exchange. It all looks good to me. Width, there is still five centimeters available in the left and on the right. A pretty good feeling to have all that space. And the depth with 75 millimeters, we'll have to calculate some additional space for the bus bar and there is still a little space left, plus some space at the front for heat exchange. We definitely have enough space and the cover can close without a problem. In terms of measurements, everything fits perfectly. Next question, how many inputs and outputs do we manage to get in there? We can look at that right here. 64 inputs, 64 outputs, 16 analog inputs, and 8 analog outputs. Siemens really does offer an efficient use of available space directly at the machine. The only thing left to do is order. Let's do that then. We switch to the order list and have another look at what we have to get. Everything matches the peripheral modules. Then all we have left to do is click export in the industry mall, right here and the order is sent directly to your email account, and the modules will reach you right away. This here is the open controller we have just configured and ordered via Industry Mall. It is a PC-based system. That means we will also need a mass storage, which is included in the scope of delivery, a CFast card on which the operating system, Windows 7 embedded in a 64-bit version, and the software controller come pre-installed. Simply place the CFast card in this card slot and you're ready to install the device. To do that, we'll have to remove the existing CPU from the array. We disconnect the power, then we detach the CPU right here, no tools are needed, and then take it out. Next we put the open controller in, snap it into place on the standard mounting rail at the back, and then we connect the power here. The open controller is a PC-based system, which means we also have PC interfaces on board, one DVI interface and three USB interfaces. We'll use these now to connect this multi-touch monitor directly to the open controller. Thanks. First of all, there is the DVI cable, and right below that is the USB port. Our system is now wired and we can start the system for the first time. The CPU, we can see the green light, but the rest is not online yet. The system will start itself up now and implement the configuration. We can see the progress on the monitor. We are now in the setup mode of the Windows operating system. I will have to do all this only once, when this central assembly is started up for the first time. 
A fully licensed copy of Windows is included in the scope of delivery. You can find your license key on a label on the reverse of the Restore DVD. For the initial installation, however, I only have to accept the license conditions. As a final step, I can now specify an IP address. This can also be done at a later time from within the Windows operating system. In this case, it makes sense to use the same network IP address used in my automation program for initial commissioning. Let's have a look at the TIA portal to see what is configured at this point. We go ahead and open my network view in the TIA portal. And then I'll have a look at my open controller to see what address is given there. There is a really clever button right here at the top in the TIA portal, Show IP Addresses. Now I can see the open controller has two Ethernet interfaces. Let's take a look on the left here. It has the address 0.1. We will change that here now as well. I will apply it here then. 192, 168, 0, 1. And that is the end of the setup. My system is now fully operational, and I can see the display app of the software controller. No other Windows settings are required for the functionality of the software controller. I can now go directly to the engineering framework of the TIA portal and start my project. The first step is to connect our Profinet cable to the open controller. We open the interface where we set up the IP address earlier, and then we can directly select the open controller in the TIA portal. Then we can start the download to the device, just like with any normal CPU. We check everything once again, and then commence the loading process. I can see on my open controller that something is downloading, followed by a message that the open controller will now restart. This only happens once for initial commissioning. Later projects will be downloaded without prompting a restart. After the restart, Windows is now fully loaded again, and the software controller has initialized. We can see that the decentralized peripherals are now recognized, as the LEDs are flashing. The CPU is currently stopped, and no project has been loaded yet. I will do that now. As a final step, we will now have to complete the process in the TIA portal. There is a dialog waiting for us to do just that. What's left now is to download the hardware configuration and the software. So we will click the Load button. The Step 7 project is now loading in the software controller of the CPU, which is just the same procedure as with any other somatic controller. That's it. We are now done and have a fully functional controller. We can see here that the display app is in run mode, and the CPU controls the IOs. We can see that the run light is on. So in conclusion, the controller based on the ET200SP peripheral system offers plenty of options with minimal space requirements. And thanks to the TIA portal, everything is up and running in record time.